Good Tuesday morning, friends. I'm meteorologist Ashley Ruiz. The time is 1030 and we do have an update on Hurricane Laura that is in the southern Gulf of Mexico continues to strengthen out there. It is a little less than 600 miles southeast of Lake Charles here in Louisiana. It has max sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. The hurricane hunters, the NOAA hurricane hunters, found 75 mile per hour winds as of 7:15 this morning during one of their recon flights, and that was the official word from them saying that it is officially a hurricane. Of course, it is in the Gulf and it it's had quite the journey. It battled a lot of uh, drier air in the beginning and then some land interaction with Hispaniola really didn't do a number on it. Now it is in the Gulf. The Gulf is open for business and it has a lot to work with in in the form of low wind shear. As we recall, Marco was battling some serious wind shear and what's left of Marco is just an area of low pressure just south of the Louisiana coast and there's still a good bit of wind shear in place so Laura may encounter some wind shear as it nears the far northwestern Gulf but it might not do much in the way of weaken it so right now the water vapor imagery you see the bright pink colors and of course I put Laura right there on the screen showing the southern Gulf of Mexico still seeing a little bit of shear and some dry air so we'll have to see if that does a number on Laura. Hopefully it does before it nears the northern Gulf Coast. The latest track from the National Hurricane Center, they still have it moving west northwest a little while. It has slowed down one mile per hour. It was at 17, now down to 16. And it's forecast to gain some strength as we head into the evening hours around 85 mile per hour winds perhaps this evening and then making uh, it a cat two hurricane by the morning with projected winds of 105 miles per hour. And then eventually it takes that northwesterly turn. How quickly does that turn happen? Again, something we'll have to wait and see, but model guidance has been pretty consistent with a landfall near the Texas and Louisiana state line specifically near the Sabine River, as you see right there, as a Cat 3 hurricane, and that would make it a major hurricane. Some model guidance are showing maybe even a little stronger than that. And if that's the case, then obviously once it reaches that Cat 3 status, it's a major hurricane, and we could potentially see some catastrophic damage wherever it does ultimately end up. But as you see, the cone is a little smaller. That means that confidence is growing more and more of uh, far southeastern or upper Texas coast at, or a Louisiana landfall, southwest Louisiana landfall. Now I do want to stress that impacts will be felt well away from the center and it's our main impact here in the capital city and just southeast Louisiana in general will be coastal flooding and storm surge. We could see some gusty wind, which I'll break down all the alerts for you in a minute because we now have tropical storm warnings and then hurricane warnings in effect. So if your phone went off, if you have the BR Proud app, you might have gotten an update if you live in West Baton Rouge Parish or Iberville Parish, Point Capu Parish. Again, I'll break it down for you in a minute. But as it moves inland, again, forecast to make landfall sometime late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, and then it will weaken as it lifts to the north. And as it pulls away from South Louisiana, we're going to have to watch for some rain bands setting up because if it pulls all that moisture from the Gulf and it's just still moving from south to north, then we could see some heavy rain wherever this rain band sets up. Here are some of the tropical models showing again, pretty consistent with potentially a southwest Louisiana landfall or far upper Texas coast landfall, far eastern Texas, just to maybe the north of Galveston near Houston or anywhere closer to Cameron. Of course, we have a few outliers, but this is within that hurricane, um, National Hurricane Center track. So again, more confidence is growing. It's likely going to make landfall near the Louisiana and Texas state line. This is one of the models that we have in our computer system. It's the IBM graph, and this just kind of illustrates what we'll possibly see out of uh, Laura. So right now, what we're seeing, we're seeing cloudy skies outside, and we have some passing showers out there. That's all remnant from the remnants of Marco.
So we'll continue to see perhaps some tropical downpours, some spots not even seeing much in the way of rain, but you might get a small little shower parked over you and it could produce some heavy rain. This is showing as we transition into Wednesday. So Wednesday is going to be the day if you haven't made preparations for even just tropical storm force winds, you don't want all your lawn furniture to get blown around. If we get caught under a heavy rain band, it's going to produce some uh, pretty gusty winds as well. And we have the threat for some tornadoes. But again, I'll break this all down for you in full detail. Walking you through this uh, model specifically, it just shows how we'll see some outer rain bands. It's not going to rain all day tomorrow as Laura begins to approach the Louisiana and Texas coast, but we'll see a rain band perhaps a, a break. Some spots might not see anything. You see how sporadic they are. Those are the outer rain bands. This particular model brings a landfall right near the Sabine River and just near the state line. And then watch what happens into Thursday morning. Uh, remember I mentioned it, it's moving to the north and as it does so it's pulling more moisture from the south and it's almost essentially its tail and it acts as a rain train. So conveyor belt of moisture if you will and as it lifts to the north it's still bringing, I'll go back for you just so you could see it a little more. I know it exited. Notice it's just nonstop rain for a little while because of that rain train as it lifts away. I'm concerned about that happening, but don't take this as gospel. Not saying it's going to happen in Baton Rouge, but it could occur somewhere. Um, it's not going to be too far of where it makes landfall, maybe 100 miles to the east or so. Again, we'll have to see how the rain band set up. That will tell us who could see a, um, at least a isolated flash flooding threat. Again, if you get caught under the rain band, you could see several inches of rain in a short amount of time. So that's going to be something we have to watch. Rainfall totals as a whole widespread, maybe two to four inches on average, but locally higher in rain bands. Could see some tropical storm winds, but more so to the west of the Mississippi River where we have tropical storm warnings in effect and more specifically near the coast. We will see the strongest winds near the core of where Laura makes landfall. That will be hurricane force winds. And then near the coast as well, we could see some tropical storm force winds as well. Storm surge again for Louisiana is going to be impactful. We have potentially four to six feet of storm surge from Morgan City to the mouth of the Mississippi River. Inland lakes could see two to four feet. That includes Lake Maurepa and then Lake Pontchartrain as well. As for the risk for tornadoes, I mentioned that. Today, there could be a low end risk for a brief spin up. That's again associated with Marco. We had a tornado warning earlier in St. Tammany Parish from a shower that moved ashore. That's just typical with these tropical uh, setups, if you will. Wednesday and into Thursday, more specifically, probably during the evening and overnight hours on Wednesday and early Thursday, we'll have that risk for some spin up tornadoes within those outer rain bands since we are on the east side of. Laura and we're expecting to stay on the east side of Laura. So here's a breakdown of the storm surge. I know it's a lot of numbers, a lot of colors, but the storm surge warning that's all the way from from southeast Texas all the way to the mouth of the Mississippi River and where you're seeing the highest numbers that is Seabrim State Park, Texas to intercoastal city, Louisiana, and that includes Sabine Lake and Calcasieu Lake, nine to 13 feet of storm surge. That is tremendous life threatening storm surge. Uh, a lot of areas near the immediate coast. I know there have been some mandatory evacuations. I've heard uh, from Cameron Parish as well. And so this is not what you want to see by any means. Also, intracoastal city to Morgan City, which includes Vermilion Bay, 7 to 11 feet. That's why we have that storm surge warning. And then Morgan City to the mouth of the Mississippi River is 4 to 6. And again, where we have that light pink color, that's a storm surge watch, which means storm surge is possible within the next 36, 48 hours. The storm surge warning means that storm surge, life-threatening storm surge is a good possibility in the next 36 hours as Laura begins to move closer to shore. And keep in mind, it's expected to make landfall Wednesday night into Thursday. So if you have friends and family um, within any of this hurricane, hurricane warning or anywhere where Laura could potentially make landfall all the way up to Alexandria, check in on them, make sure they have their their hurricane plan ready to go. 
Um, notice the city of Baton Rouge itself, not under this tropical storm warning, but we have a tropical storm watch for West Baton Rouge Parish, uh, Point Coupee Parish, and then Iberville Parish heading down to the coast, Assumption Parish. The river parishes, at least on the west side of the river, are under this tropical storm warning. So that means tropical storm conditions are expected within the next 36 hours. And the closer you are to the core of, of where Laura comes ashore, that's where we're going to have the most impacts and even to the east of it as well. So that's why we have that hurricane warning, which includes Lake Charles. And so it's going to be something we're going to have to watch very, very carefully because it could wobble more to the west. And that means our impacts likely won't be as significant. But even if it wobbles to the east a little bit more into southwest Louisiana, our impacts could change. So that's why you need to pay attention and make sure you check back in with us frequently. We'll have another update around 1 p.m. That's the intermediate immediate advisory, not expecting much with that, but the 4 p.m. is a new track to see if perhaps the track will shift more to the west like model guidance is showing or is it going to stay right where it is. This is another product the National Hurricane Center releases. This is the probability of tropical storm force winds and it's showing Baton Rouge, the Baton Rouge Metro has anywhere between uh, it looks as though 50 to maybe 60% chance for some tropical storm force winds, probably more in the way of wind gust. We could, I, I'm thinking maybe, maybe 30 to 50 mile per hour gusts may be possible here in the Baton Rouge Metro, but they will obviously be higher west of the river where possibly 40 to 60 with higher wind gusts, but the coast especially, and the closer you are to Beaumont, Lake Charles, and again, the immediate coast will have the best shot, and even closer to Lafayette will have the best shot to see some tropical storm force winds. As for, let's see, the rainfall totals, this is a product from the Weather Prediction Center showing maybe between seven and nine inches of rainfall. That's widespread. You could see isolated amounts exceeding 10 inches of rainfall. Our area, again, around two to four inches on average. But again, if you get caught under one of these rain bands, you could double that amount easily. So um, again, I would, I would prepare for at least for some possible shifts to the east. We just are monitoring things very carefully. I know everyone was a little nervous with both Marco and then Laura, and with Laura still staying to our west, we're, we'll still see some impacts, more so in the way of storm surge and coastal flooding, along with some uh, perhaps some rain bands, heavy rain bands and some gusty winds here and there and possibly the threat for tornadoes. And the concerning thing is it's going to be late night into early Thursday. So you need multiple ways to receive warnings, ones that can wake you up, a NOAA weather radio, is a good deal. A radio in general will be on air if if anything if if anything pops up will will likely be wall to wall and then you can count on us to keep you guys posted on social media, on the stream, and then on our uh, on NBC Local 33, and then of course Fox 44, as well as our free Be Our Proud app. This is a great tool to, to download to get ahead of the storm. You'll get notifications. We have a whole Tracking the Tropics page that you can go and find the latest up-to-date information. I'm gonna update the web as soon as I get off here with you guys, and then update it and put all the watches, the warnings, all of that there. And you can even check out the radar and you can track Laura yourself as well. You'll get the up-to-date information from the National Hurricane Center so you can see this cone and the track on your phone as well. So again, we'll continue to monitor this, fine tune the details, but again, our main threats will be the threat for some heavy rain with more so with the rain bands, also isolated tornadoes, given this uh, atmosphere, given the setup with tropical systems, were known to have some spin up tornadoes and and they do spawn with little to no warning. So that's why I want to stress have that game plan ready to go hunker down till the storm's gone because again, it is expected to stay to the west, but we're still on the east side so we can get some pretty intense uh, activity out there. And again, the most I also have a product I forgot. Let me show you this one last product before we wrap it up. Um, I was working on one that basically shows the most or the most likely time of arrival of tropical storm force winds. I am looking for it, here we go. I just updated it before. 
um, I jumped on here with you guys. Okay, so this is another product from the National Hurricane Center. Again, those colors are the probability of tropical storm force winds. Obviously, near the core of where it's going to go, they're going to have hurricane force winds. So that is 100%. Here in the capital city, again, between 50 and 60%. And the, the closer you are to southwest Louisiana, the greater probability um, there is. So closer to Lafayette, there's about a 70, 80% chance for some tropical storm force winds. And then um, this shows the most likely time of tropical storm force wind arrival. So it, it does show potentially near the coast um, a Wednesday morning, but it could be late tonight into Wednesday morning. But the National Hurricane Center is saying the most likely time of arrival will be Wednesday morning. And then it, you can't really see the faint um, line there, but it is showing potentially some uh, tropical storm force wind Wednesday evening, even here in the capital city. So I would plan on tying down the furniture, bring any loose objects inside, walk around your, your yard, make sure you don't have any loose tree limbs. We get intense thunderstorms just in the summer in general here, and that could knock some things down. So just make sure things are good to go. You have your your hurricane safety kit ready to go. So if you lose power, because we could lose power, not saying it's a definite, but the, the chance is there with some heavy rain and then you get some gusty wind. And of course, again, download that free BR Proud app, a great tool to have and we'll join you um, when we have more information. Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel is going to be in this afternoon. He'll bring you the latest on the 4 p.m. advisory. So stay weather aware. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. You can email me at aruez at proud.com find me on twitter i update frequently there so stay weather aware and take care we'll see you soon